Welcome to Eternal Faith. I'm your host, Elder Roger Roll, and as always, we are taking a closer look at the Bible, God's eternal pages. And we are so fortunate today to have two very near and dear friends in studio today. And that is my good friend, Elder David Smith, and his wonderful wife, Sister Vanille Smith. And I know that they're very involved in their local church. Uh, one of the areas they are involved in is, is family life ministries. And I know that the Lord will use them to continue to richly bless persons as they come into the church, as they come to know Jesus even better. Today we're going to talk about the Lord is King as we continue our look into the book of Psalms. And I would ask uh, Elder David to... Say a prayer as we begin. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you once again for allowing us to come to read and review things pertaining to you in your holy word. Pray, oh Father, that you be with us as we study and hopefully the listening audience will uh, be impacted by the presentation today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 And amen. The Lord is King. So as we look at the book of Psalms, we realize that there's grace, there's mercy, there's God's plan to save us. All these things appear in the book of Psalms as we prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ and the earth made new. And so I'd like to read a quote from uh, Ellen White in Steps to Christ. This is an adapted version, and she writes, The cross teaches us about God and his love. The more we study this topic, the more we will understand God's mercy, care, and forgiveness. We will see that God and his laws are fair. We also will see the proof of his love. God's love doesn't have limits. His love for us is bigger than a mother's love for her child even if the child refuses to obey mm. her. Mm. Mm. And as I say, that's from Steps to Christ, page 15. So before we go further, I would ask Sister Vanille to uh, comment. How do you, you see that comment? How does that touch you as a mother or wife uh, with children? It, it just goes to show that beyond what I can, can do for my child, my family, God's love is even greater. Mm. And even, even that disobedient child, <laughs> um, and we see it every day around the court, you know, mm -hmm. um, exactly. mothers are the ones who are there showing forth this support of that child, mm -hmm. even though... <laughs> despite of how they are. Yeah, despite of how they are. <laughs> and, um, and God's love is greater than... But, but his love is something that helps to transform if we allow. And that's the beautiful thing about, you know, God's love. It doesn't cloak us in our sin. Hmm. As human beings, we tend to cloak each other and may not want to say exactly what the person is doing wrong and that kind of thing. But God's love goes beyond that and wants a higher road for us to walk, a, a higher standard of character he wants mm. to build in us. And so it's just so good to know that God just loves us more than we can even comprehend. You know, because we live in this world of sin, our concept of love is so warped. Yes. We, yeah. we can't fully comprehend yeah, we, it. Yes. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's limited yes. to what God wants to do for us, you know. Yes, yes. And so, uh, Elder David, I, I would like to, you to respond to this. Said The book of Psalms, you know, teaches us that God is the king. 
And I just pause it before I, I read some more in that the most famous king today probably is the King of England. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we see all of his challenges, um, mm-hmm. all of his weaknesses. And so he obviously cannot compare to our God who is perfect. And so we, even in that, as you mentioned, how we don't fully grasp how God is love, uh, we can't fully grasp how God is king. <laughs> you know, um, and, and I go on to read it, it said that God is in control of everything that happens on the earth. Now imagine that, <laughs> everything, everything that happens on the earth. Yeah. At the same time, why do we need to understand a worldwide war between God and Satan is happening? The great controversy, we call it. A worldwide war is happening all around us. And how does the Bible, this Bible truth, help us to understand why there's so much sin and suffering on this earth? If, 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 if God is in control of everything, can you unpack that for us? Let me, I'll try. Um, well, if we look at the beginning, that when God created everything, the perfect, sin came into the world, and God allowed things to run its course. The reason why he did that, so the other universe around him, the unfallen worlds around him, they could see um, the, the real culprit behind the sin, the chaos, the war, and the suffering that goes on in the world. He could have made everything brand new again. He could have destroyed everything. But he decided to allow, because of his character and his true love, sincere love, mm. that he has for us. He allowed things that takes its course. So all the universe could see that God is true and just and kind at the end of the day. You know? And his character shows, seeing that he allowed these things, and we see from scripture, he allowed these things to happen so that so that um his his divineness could be a part of us now. We may not understand it, but be a part of us. So when and so when we start to serve him, we could truly express that love to other to another person yes and, and so, so it comes to mind that uh, maybe we need to take a second look at that you mentioned around the cordos when a mother is there and she's saying my good son <laughs> and, and and we and generally we look We're at like, him as, as a monster yes you know but, mm-hmm. but here it's maybe an indication of how god looks at us, us. yeah he saw <laughs> he, he, got, he created he, us perfect perfect <laughs> for for certain perfection, he placed within us certain giftings and things that he wants us to accomplish. But here he sees what we can be. Mm. That mother sees what her child can yeah, be he, too. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so, hence, there's that glimpse. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Like Job, for example, if I may interject, like Job, for example, uh, Satan came to God, telling God, um, this man you hedge and you have this all around him and whatever have you. And God said, have you considered my servant Job, who was a perfect, upright man? At this point, sin already existed in the world. God sees beyond what we see. God sees him as a perfect being in his eyes. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's how God sees us. Amen. He sees us where we can be better than we can think or whatever uh-huh. we become of ourselves. So mm-hmm. he is looking beyond don't say, I can't, I can't. God has you here for a purpose, and a purpose for you is to serve him and serve others and to help someone to come to him. Amen. 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 So, so as, as we see that there is suffering in the world and there's sin in the world, and as you mentioned, God is in control, and he's allowing certain things to play out, <coughs> play out yeah. because God, you mentioned uh, the universe and other worlds, and God is allowing the onlookers to see that he's not a tyrant, as he was accused of by Satan in heaven, and yeah. that he, he doesn't create robots with no, no. Choice. choice. And so he has yeah. to allow things to play out so mm-hmm. that the worlds can see that we choose God mm-hmm. as right. opposed to choosing evil, evil. and yeah. sin. Yeah. And so um, I'd like to talk about the bible also teaches us that god made us how does this teaching help us understand who we are and how we must take care of everything 
that God has made on this earth. And then also, what happens when people don't follow this teaching? Hmm. Okay, um, you know, the, well, my mind went to Revelation for the last verse, you know, um, for his glory were we made. That, that's the part of the scripture and the ending part there. And, um, and, and the Psalms bring out us worshiping, praising, acknowledging God because he is the, the, the awesome creator. He is the one who orders everything. And so he's the beginning, he's the end. And as I was thinking of him as creator, I know in our world today we have things we create. Mm. We, we, we are outside of the created thing. So I sew. I come up with an idea and I put that together. So I create this skirt, for example. It has a beginning mm -hmm. and it has an end. And I can decide the beginning and I could decide the end. And the skirt, I, I wear it as I, I feel. The, the skirt serves a purpose. Mm -hmm. Christ has created me for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And he has placed within me giftings and things and people that I am to meet. And as I greet and meet with them, I am to fulfill this purpose. But if I don't hook into Christ, I would never fully understand my purpose mm. because he is the author mm. He is the author of the purpose within me. Amen. And so I need to learn to spend time with him each day through the scriptures and the Psalms um, shows us, like we studied in the other lessons, um, how we can spend time with God. What are we to share with God? How we are to praise God? And so I am to do that every day so that God's purpose is revealed to me in what I am to do. If I don't do that, I find myself wasting time. Mm. Doing things I ain't supposed to be doing, um, not being the example I ought to be, um, and if we see it in the world today, even on a higher level, um, with all these different scenarios coming into our world about male, female, <laughs> about what is right or wrong, is there an alter alternative to truth? Mm. Truth is truth. White is again. white. One is one. <laughs> I can't make a $1 bill, a $100 bill. Mm. Okay, but here I am trying to make a male, a female, which is impossible. Just like a $1 cannot become $100. Mm. And so when we are not connected with God and spend time with him, that's the only, only thing we can <laughs> could do in order to discover ourselves because of us the the worst thing in us or we think our heart is good but as the bible says desperately yeah, wicked. desperately Ooh. wicked <laughs> and who who could understand it i don't even understand my own heart sometimes mm -hmm. and some things i've done mm. i or some thoughts of heart. Yes. You know, we don't tell everybody. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. we wish some people would disappear. Yeah. Sometimes we wish the worst. Sometimes we wish the best. Yeah. But um, it's only when we spend time with God. Ourselves, we are revealed. And then we say, Lord, cleanse me. Amen. Create in me that clean heart. Yes. And renew the right spirit within me so that your purpose can be seen through me as I walk, I walk on, on this earth. Amen. If God is a part of our lives, darkness flees. Yes. If we do not allow God to be a part of our lives and go our own way, our own way, mm -hmm. and we think our way is right, the Bible says our righteousness is like filthy rags. Whatever mm -hmm. righteousness we mm -hmm. think we have, it's filthy mm -hmm. rags. Mm -hmm. And darkness will take its place. Two things. Either light goes there or darkness goes there. Right. And we want light that goes there. Mm -hmm. If darkness is there... You can have lies, chaos, trouble, all sorts of things that are negative. All kind of lies that's going to come about. No matter what man tries to do to resolve these um, problems that exist, they will always happen. The only way, God, the only way these things could be resolved if mankind allow God into his heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so I'd like to... to, to 
for us to reflect as we look in the Psalms, we we see the persons, the people, the countries, Israel of the time back then, that they, many times they would worship God and when they're in a crisis, and then they turn to false gods. <laughs> Idols. <laughs> Loud. And so um, what are some of uh, modern-day false gods? And any one of you can interject. And, and why are these modern-day false gods a danger to our relationship with God? Your wife could be. What? Your husband could be. <laughs> your car could be. Your house could be. Your children could be. These false gods. How? That persons tend to worship. Because if persons put those things I just mentioned first, mm. rather than putting God first, mm. they're all idols. Mm. Look at Job, mm. for example. He put God first all the time, no matter who or what it was. He put uh, God first. Uh, his wife was second. His his livestock was third. Uh, his family all behind the scenes. But God was always first. When he went to this situation where he was with boils and whatever have you, his wife wanted him to curse God and die. He, she asked the question, "Why should you retain retain your integrity?" And mm. he said to her, "Thou speakest of a foolish woman." And he said, "The Lord give it, and the Lord take it." Blessed be the name of the Lord. Point I'm making is, there is seeing Job's example that he maintained that relationship with God, no matter what the cost was. In spite of what's happening to him, he maintained that relationship. So if we put anything before God, mm -hmm. place a God in our lives is an idol. Um, a thought that comes to mind is that um, what is so dangerous today especially in the Western world, for me, is that back then, you had these physical statues. Yes. So They're you could... You, an idol. Yeah. You, 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 you looked at this thing. You could see it. Today, we're not physically building an idol. What it is, is um, it's the turning away from spending time with God. Mm. That turning away, even though you're doing something good, you're, you're moral, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you might be very mm -hmm. gifted and time, time conscious with different things, even taking care of your body, going to sleep on time, the eight laws of health, um, except for trust in the divine power. They still I don't. <laughs> is idle because yeah. now my yeah. time is a time I'm not spending my time as I should and hence yeah. everything else consumes me except spending time with God mm. so anything else that it consumes me from spending time, time with, with God, God as I idol. should yeah. that has become an idol and because we don't physically see a, a image I think that is what is so detrimental to us today because yes. we think we're okay. Yes. And we think um, we got it all together. Mm. And um, we're not because we're not praying mm. and studying the Bible as we should on a daily basis. And, and I, what I find is if I lapse in my reading, like I said, I find time to do all sorts of other stuff ex except spending time with God. And I, I think a little later in the presentation, it talks about how do I ensure that I, am, I have God as king of my life? Mm -hmm. How, how mm -hmm. do I know that I am reigning? How mm -hmm. can I resist these, these um, temptations or these challenges that are going to come at me, whether it's through death of families or whatever, mm -hmm. how do I face these challenges? It's only when I take time Amen. with God every day. Amen. Amen. Every day. Amen. Amen. And I notice it's interesting that you use that word spending over and over again. 
And yet when we hear the word spending in today's thing, we literally think about money and spending money. <laughs> yeah. And very often yeah. that, that's, that's, that's our aim. That's our God. We want to make money well, to spend money. money. To do what? Get things. Like I told my son one time, oh, mommy, we should have a upstairs and downstairs house. <laughs> I say, brother, do we need it? I say, when you all grow up, it'll only be David and I. We don't need all of that. I said, and in, in the end, it's all going to be burnt up anyway. Mm. So what are we doing? Spending our money for what? Self-gratification. Mm. Yes. How is, how is your money assisting with the work of the Lord? Our purpose is for the Lord to reign. Yes. Yes. What are we doing with yes. what we have to help his kingdom reign here on earth Amen. until he comes? Amen. And then we come back to inherit yes. what he has, he's going to recreate for us. Yes. So, what does it say? What does it profit for all of us mm. to gain the whole mm-hmm. world and yeah. then what? Lose our, soul, mm-hmm. our souls. Mm-hmm. And so, whatever, whatever mm-hmm. I have, whatever we do, we are to do it for God's glory and honor. Because he reigns and we want his kingdom to reign here on earth, yes. wherever we and are. In our lives. And yes. so that's, yes. that's the most important thing yes. at the end of the Amen. day. Amen. Yes. Amen. And Amen. A ministry, yes. So we see that the, the, the Bible tells us that God work, God's work, he, he is the judge of all things. And there's a scripture that says judgment begins at the house of the Lord. So that God will start with his people. Mm -hmm. So if if God is judge and and judgment begins with us, God's people, as we talk about God is king, the Lord reigns. How should we live? How, How can we say to somebody who's watching this program or listening to it and they're not sure, how should we live as God's people? And also, how, how does he judge people? Because very often we hear about things that, um, when we're admonishing mm-hmm. or pointing out something to mm-hmm. a brother or sister, it's like, don't judge me, only God can judge. But how, does, uh, how should we live as God's people knowing that God is judging, will judge us, and how does he do that? If we live in communion with him, spending time with him Amen. continuously, right? Amen. Then we'll find ourselves having respect for each other. When people see the Christians are truly respecting each other, because the Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if you have love one towards another. And when the world sees this, then they will see, oh, these people are actually having this relationship and these guys are loving each other like the Bible says. These guys are not faking. And so if we, if we do that, um, we'll find persons being drawn in with other things that you have in your, in your church services, but you find people being drawn in to your community, to your congregation, and they too will find that, oh, These guys are truly Christians. They're not just saying it, but they're doing it. Amen. Amen. Um, I can't add anything more other than um, for me personally, I, um, it wasn't until, like I said, I started spending time with God that I saw persons in a different light in terms of, and I saw God in a different light as well in terms of um, how he deals with us. And the psalmist, psalm, psalmist, as they wrote, showed that God was so full of mercy and love and care. And even though persons may have made wrong decisions, once persons cried out, he was there to bring them back, to reconcile them. And I find in a lot of my relationships with some people, some of them have been going through some situations and it feels like, Lord, when will this end? And um, 
I don't know when it's going to end. Um, but God has been working with me personally Amen. for over 50 years. Mm. Um, let's say <laughs> close to 50 years you from my conscious mind. Um, you look younger than that, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, but here it is. I am, like I said, you know, to each other. We're not able to deal with one another and their situations and them coming back and saying, I'm sorry, um, help me, I'm sorry, help me, I'm sorry. How many of these cycles do we want to go through? And here it is. We expect God to forgive us every time we go to him. How come I can't release this person? How come I can't forgive this person? And so as I spend time with God, I realize that merciful side of him mm. is also a part of his, I don't know how he, how he relates it all, but it's all a part of that judgment-like part. So even though you've done certain things, there are consequences. Um, he allows certain things to play out. And all of these consequences or actions to our or reactions to our actions are all helping to drive us toward God. And so sometimes we can't fully explain why things happen to different circumstances. Like sometimes I wonder why my brother-in-law had to pass away. Mm. You know, we was praying, praying, praying. Praying, praying. And, and, uh, and, uh, but hey, that was something that happened. But God still reigns in it all. Yeah. And it was a lesson to say, hey, rely on me, Vanille. You don't know where your death is, mm. right? Rely on me. Yeah. I, um, I am your, your, your keeper, your shield. Um, don't worry about other people. You do what I impress you to do. And, and, and that's mm. it. And um, in a way, stop looking at what people want you to do. But look at what I want you to do. And so God's judgments, the Bible says, is past finding out. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things he does, we will not fully be able to explain. Um, a skirt can't explain how it became a skirt. It's just a skirt. And it can't, and it can't tell me how to make a skirt because it's not able to. Mm -hmm. So God... He reigns over us. Yeah. He he's he's sovereign in all things, and he he just knows what he is doing. Is us trusting him in our daily time with him? That as we, like we said before, hide these words in our hearts, we will not sin against him, and we'll walk in his purpose. Amen. 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 And so, I'd like to thank you, uh, Sister Vanille, Elder David, for sharing uh, so powerfully and telling us how, how the Lord is King. And we want to thank our viewing and listening audience for joining us once again here on Eternal Pages. I'm your host, Elder Roger Roll, saying be blessed. Amen. Amen.